I'm gonna start off by saying that I really love Farah as a character, and in her Modern Warfare debut, I felt like she shined. She was a great original character, and I think that her presence as well as the ULF was needed and it showed the realities of war in a way that many of us maybe don't understand or hadn't seen in a really long time in video games. It showed how bloody it can be and how many innocent lives can be hurt by it. She had a great character arc and it felt like it came full circle at the end of 2019's game. She was able to get her hands on the man that invaded her country and took her people basically as slaves in Roman Barkov. I'm still here. She was able to avenge her family and give her people hope by freeing Urzikstan, which is what her goal ultimately was. It was a satisfying and a fitting end for her character. We also see how her message reached others outside of her organization and her country, including CIA operative Alex Keller, who basically sacrificed his career and almost his life for Farah and her cause. I've been on assignment my whole life. This is what I believe in. Give me the order. You are a freedom fighter, Alex. You're a born leader, Farah. Say the word. Now, the next time that we see Farah is in Modern Warfare 2 as she is helping Captain Price in rescuing Kate Laswell. Her appearance in Modern Warfare 2 was memorable and brief. She didn't overstay her welcome, nor did it seem forced. I was actually very happy to see her. However, things began to change a little bit after the campaign finished. When we began to move towards Modern Warfare 3, her presence in the franchise began to feel, I guess, forced, at least in my opinion. I began to wonder why is it that Urzikstan is so important to the world in Modern Warfare? Why do we need to have Makarov attack Farah and try to blame her and her people if she's already blacklisted within the US government? What list? Foreign terror organization list. I've ordered my Marines to treat Farah's army as hostiles. It felt like they needed to put Makarov against the ULF to just continue using Urzikstan for war zone and not much else. I think the campaign suffers greatly because of this, and now Farah is overstaying her welcome. I didn't see the need for her and Urzikstan in Modern Warfare 3, and I think that we need to let them go and concentrate on other foreign groups or other missions. Not everything needs to revolve or circle back to Urzikstan and Farah's Liberation Forces, which I feel like this trilogy has done quite a bit, especially in Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 3. Again, in 19 it was needed and understandable, but in 3 it just didn't seem like the right choice. And again, I'm not saying that I don't like Farah, but I think the potential of the series and the campaign is being held back by always having to include her or Urzikstan. There is so much to explore and so much that we can do with these characters when we can let them breathe and tackle other topics. Task Force 1 for 1 and Price have to be more than just Urzikstan's bodyguards. Do you know what I mean? I think the time to change this would have to be Modern Warfare 4, and maybe leaving Farah or Urzikstan out of the conflict would open up more opportunities for other characters to return, like Los Vaqueros, and give more of the shine to other members of Task Force 1 for 1, like Gaz, Nikolai, or even Ghost. Now I'm not sure what they would do. I just hope that we leave Farah alone for a little bit, especially Urzikstan. <laughs>